We're just getting confirmation through that Colin McRae, the former World Rally champion, has been killed. On a tragic day, September 15, 2007, the world of motorsports was shaken to its core when Colin McRae, a renowned Scottish rally driver, and his five-year-old son Johnny were among four people involved in a helicopter crash. From an early age, Colin McRae had an undeniable passion for rallying. It was in his blood, and he knew it. At the age of 18, he made his debut in rallying. McRae was a natural. Everyone who watched him saw his talent. He quickly made a name for himself in the Scottish Rally Championship, but his ambitions went beyond that. He longed for more, something bigger. McRae wanted to compete against the best in the world and push his limits, and he did. He was over the moon when he was offered a position in the Subaru World Rally Team in 1991. It was a dream come true for the young rally driver, who was eager to prove his worth on the global stage. Within a year of joining the team, he proved his massive talent by securing his first podium finish at the Rally New Zealand, leaving no doubt that he was destined for greatness. The highlight of McRae's career came in 1995 when he became the first British driver to win the World Rally Championship. It was a historic moment that confirmed his status as a motorsport legend. His career continued to explode and he won a total of 25 WK rallies. But his legacy goes far beyond his numerous victories. He was known for his fearless driving style and incredible car control, often pushing his car to the limit. Fans loved him for his charm and accessibility and his determination on the track. On September 15, 2007 at 2 p.m., McRae flew in a Eurocopter AS350B2 Squirrel helicopter from his home in Lanark, Scotland to a farm in Larkhall, eight miles away. His five-year-old son Johnny, his six-year-old friend Ben Porcelli, and Graham Duncan, a family friend, accompanied him during the six-minute flight. Duncan filmed much of the trip with a camcorder. They had spent an hour on the farm and took off again at 3 p.m. on their way to McRae's home in Jerviswood near Lanark. During the return flight, McRae performed several complex maneuvers, including flying within 20 feet of trees and climbing the helicopter at high altitude out of a valley. According to the report, the passengers seemed to enjoy the maneuvers. Camcorder footage showed much laughter and shouting. Less than a minute after the camcorder was turned off, the helicopter's main rotor blade collided with a pine tree while close to the Mousewater Valley ground. The helicopter then collided with an oak tree and caught fire. The accident happened about 150 feet from the helicopter pad near McRae's home, where the helicopter was supposed to have landed. Several witnesses, including Lanark residents, saw the helicopter flying. They said the helicopter approached the town from the west before turning and descending into the valley of Mouse Water, which ran along the north side of town in McRae's house. Witnesses could hear the hum of the rotor blades as the helicopter began to take off, but it was clear something was wrong as the helicopter flew low and fast. The helicopter lost control and wobbled in the air like a leaf caught in a gust of wind. Panic ensued as the aircraft began to descend rapidly and flew to the ground at incredible speed. McRae tried everything in his power to regain control, but it was too late and a deafening bang sounded. The helicopter crashed into a densely wooded area at the bottom of a steep hill. The crash caused a large fire that destroyed much of the aircraft's structure. The sound of the impact reverberated through the valley and after a moment of silence, witnesses approached the crash site and saw that something terrible had happened. The wreckage lay scattered on the ground, and it was immediately clear that there were no survivors. Investigators noted that the helicopter took an unusual flight path through the valley. While this was not the most logical route between the two destinations, it would be consistent with previous maneuvers seen on the camcorder. It is possible that McRae chose this route because it provided an opportunity to connect the previously flown maneuvers, which his passengers apparently liked. The downside was that it involved increased risk. Rescue teams rushed to the crash site and found a devastating scene. The once picturesque wooded area was now covered in debris and destruction. As the rescue teams approached, the reality of the situation started to sink in. The helicopter had crashed with such force that it was clear that there would be no survivors. Although rescuers did their best to save the passengers, they eventually had to declare all four occupants dead at the scene. The news of the tragic helicopter crash had a huge impact on the local community and the entire motorsports world. The British Department for Transport Air Accidents Investigation Branch, in cooperation with Strathclyde Police, investigated the scene of the helicopter crash. The wreckage was later transported to Farnborough for further forensic analysis. The findings of the inquiry into the tragic helicopter crash were released, 
and they painted a clear picture of what went wrong. According to Sheriff Nicholas Stewart, who presided over the inquiry for over two weeks, the deaths of the passengers could have been avoided if McRae had not engaged in risky low-level flying when it was not necessary. The sheriff's written statement emphasized that there were no operational or logistical reasons for McRae to fly the helicopter to Mouse Valley. In addition, the sheriff also noted that McRae did not have the necessary training and experience to navigate through such difficult terrain, making his decision to do so unreasonable. The helicopter crashed because it deviated from its planned flight path and landed in the trees along the valley. McRae tried to avoid the incident, but the helicopter's speed and its position in Mouse Valley made it impossible to land safely. The investigation found that McRae's low flying was unsafe and unnecessary and that he should have refrained from flying at such a low altitude and high speed. The camcorder footage confirmed this. The Air Accidents Investigation Bureau had immediately launched an investigation into the crash. During the investigation, Sergeant Robert Logan made a harrowing statement. He told candidly that he saw body parts hanging out of the crashed helicopter. Despite the flames and smoke, he saw certain details such as the tanned boot of a leg protruding from the left side of the helicopter. Dr. Gerald Murphy, who had been called to identify the fatalities, also testified and described how he had seen a small child shoe still smoldering in the wreckage. During the investigation, Karen and Mark Porcelli, the parents of Ben Porcelli, were interviewed. They stated that they had not given Mr. McRae permission to take their son on the helicopter. Colin McRae's father, Jimmy McRae, spoke to the media after the crash, describing his son as a great champion and a great man. He also paid tribute to the other occupants of the helicopter, saying that the families of the other people involved in the accident are devastated, and our thoughts and condolences are with them. On September 26, 2007, the funeral of rally driver Colin McRae and his son Johnny was held at Dowdowie Crematorium near Glasgow, Scotland. About 200 people attended the service, including some well-known figures from the sports world, such as Formula One champion Jackie Stewart, IndyCar champion Dario Franchitti, and Scottish national soccer team captain Barry Ferguson to say goodbye to the rally champion. Colin and Johnny McRae were cremated in the same casket. On Sunday, September 30th, 2007, a celebration of life was held at 4 p.m. at St. Nicholas Church in Lanark. The church was filled with about 700 mourners, along with a crowd of 15,000 people outside. Images from McRae's career and personal life were shown on large video screens outside the church. After the service, Colin McRae's widow, brother, and father bowed and applauded to the crowd outside. On October 3, 2007, a preliminary assessment was made public, which showed that the helicopter had hit the ground with a steep nose down. A full report of the crash was released on January 28, 2008. The report concluded that the probable cause of the accident was the helicopter colliding with terrain following an uncontrolled descent. The report went on to state that the cause of the uncontrolled descent could not be determined due to the lack of data recovered from the helicopter's onboard recording devices, which were damaged in the crash. Despite the fact that no technical cause for the accident was found, a technical defect could not be completely ruled out. Several problems were discovered regarding the maintenance and flight operations of the helicopter. For example, it was found that the helicopter was operated without the proper license and that McRae had not been trained to operate the aircraft under instrument flight rules. In addition, some important pages were missing from the helicopter's flight manual, which could have affected his ability to safely fly the aircraft. In addition, the report stated that the weather conditions at the time of the crash were good. This means that visibility was not an issue and there were no hazardous weather conditions that could have caused the accident. Moreover, there was no indication that the pilot was affected by a medical condition, which ruled out another possible cause of the crash. McRae's autopsy revealed no significant natural diseases that could have caused or contributed to the accident. In addition, toxicology showed no drugs in the pilot's blood, and there was no evidence that he had consumed alcohol on the day of the accident. In 2009, an investigation report revealed that McRae's license had expired in February 2005 and that he had not undergone the required competency check in March 2006. However, a CAA spokesman clarified that there was no evidence that McRae was an incompetent pilot, and investigators were looking into why he had not maintained his documentation. On September 6, 2011, after the final 16-day investigation, the final report was released by Sheriff Nicholas Stewart. The following was concluded. 
it would have been a reasonable precaution to refrain from flying helicopter GCBHL into Mouse Valley wherein the pilot engaged in low-level flying when it was unnecessary and unsafe for him to do so whilst carrying passengers on board, wrote Stewart. The accident occurred when due to an unknown occurrence, the aircraft deviated from its intended flight path and crashed into trees lining the side of Mouse Valley. The aircraft was in powered flight at the time of the collision, and attempts were being made by Mr. McRae to recover from that unknown event. These attempts were rendered ultimately unsuccessful because of the position and speed of the helicopter within Mouse Valley and the resultant restrictions on opportunity to land or fly the helicopter to safety. Such options would have been available to him had he adhered to the rules of good airmanship and desisted from flying in the valley at low height and high speed. During the fatal accident inquiry, the sheriff and legal representatives involved in the case visited the site in the woods where the Eurocopter Squirrel aircraft had crashed. During the inquiry hearings, it was revealed that one of the passengers on board the helicopter, Mr. Duncan, had filmed much of the outbound and return flights using his personal camcorder. Some of the footage was recovered and presented as evidence during the inquiry. Sheriff Stewart stated that the footage showed the helicopter was flying at unnecessarily low heights. He undertook significant maneuvering at low level, and the helicopter seems to have encountered significant G-loading as a result. To the evident enjoyment of his passengers, these episodes of extremely low-level flying and the excessive maneuver parameters, particularly the descent into the valley by Larkhall, all as captured on the video recording, are indicative of an aircraft being flown imprudently, without due regard to the principles of good airmanship and in such a way that normal safety margins would be reduced. To operate an aircraft in the UK, it is mandatory to possess a valid pilot's license and a current medical certificate. Additionally, the license must be endorsed with the specific type of aircraft to be flown. Sheriff Stewart determined that Mr. McRae did not have a valid pilot's license or a valid rating for the Eurocopter Squirrel helicopter. He was, accordingly, in breach of Article 26 of the Air Navigation Order 2005 when he flew his helicopter on September 15, 2007 and should not have flown that machine at the time, she said. Mr. McRae's family issued a statement expressing their belief that the cause of the crash could not be determined. His father, Jimmy McRae, said, We still believe we will never know what caused the crash, but we were never in any doubt as to Colin's prowess as a fine pilot. Everybody knows from Colin's rallying career that safety is always an issue, and that his reaction and eye and hand coordination were world class. He said, had a flight recorder been fitted to the aircraft, it may have been possible to determine what occurred in the final seconds of the flight and what actually caused the helicopter to crash. This would prevent uncertainty as to the cause of the crash and allow lessons to be learned from tragic accidents such as this. Mr. McRae said he hoped the family could move on after the findings. The McRae family's solicitor, Peter Watson, added, Although Colin's license was out of date, this played no contributory factor whatsoever to the accident. The passing of Colin McRae was a huge shock to the motorsports community. His unprecedented presence, skillful driving, and fearless attitude made him a beloved icon with fans around the world. His legacy will live on. Thanks for watching this story. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell to stay updated on more similar videos. We would love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your comments below. Until next time.